All you beautiful people from all over the world, thank you so much for being here today. Those of you that are new here, my name is Dave. This is Callie's Groom Room. This is a channel dedicated, devoted to all things men's grooming and fragrance related. So, if that sounds interesting to you, and you think you're going to find this content valuable, which I'm sure you will, go ahead, do me a favor down below. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. You know what's on today's agenda, okay? But I want to give you a brief background on how difficult this list was to compile, right? So you think about it, 10 designer fragrances for life, right? I've talked about a bunch of designer fragrances over the past, you know, year and a half or something like that. And to think about, to only narrow that down to 10 is very difficult. So difficult, in fact, that this video actually took three days. I had the idea three days ago, and here we are today because... I kept going back in and taking things out and then putting things back in, changing this, changing that. You know, it's just very difficult to compile a list like this. You know, 10 designer fragrances for life only. The rest, they, they've got to go. So I've narrowed it down to 10. Obviously, that's why we're here today. Coming up next is a list. Stay tuned. We're going to get into that list in just a moment, but a couple of things here I want to clarify, okay? First things first, I want to hear from you guys. If there's only one, two, or you want to be bold and list all 10 designer fragrances that you would keep, we would love to hear you. Yeah, I say we because this is a growing community we have here. It's not just about me. It's about all of us communicating and engaging to, to uh, together. Sorry, excuse me there. But anyway, yeah, I would love to hear from you guys what some of your favorite designer choices would be. Love to know that, and I know many others would also. I tried to keep this, you know, one fragrance per brand, but that was kind of difficult, and you'll understand why, and you'll probably agree. Some of you will agree, some of you won't. If you don't agree with me, that's perfectly fine too, because this channel is about that as well. You don't have to agree with everything I say. But anyway, um, yeah, try to keep it one fragrance per brand. Didn't really work out that way, but... What I'm going to do here and what's going to make this list interesting is I'm going to give you the fragrance, but I'm also going to tell you why. That is very important for you to hear from me why I'm keeping this and why it deserves to be in this top 10 for life. Let's get into the list first. Coming in at the first spot, 10 spot, like I said, guys, not ranked, not a ranked video, but this one comes from the brand La Lique. This is Ancre Noir. This is the A La Extreme version. So this one here, I love. This actually replaced on this list replace Tom Ford Gray Vetiver. Now, is this better than Gray Vetiver? I don't know. You know, that's kind of a tough thing to say. But for me, I like this more because maybe it's more of a complex fragrance. And I kind of like that about it. It has a little bit of a green feel, but there's this smoky vetiver aspect to it. It's a little bit darker style than like Tom Ford Gray Vetiver. Not that I'm trying to compare, but just because this replaced that, I'm just trying to explain the why here. And I like that darkness about it because like Tom Ford Gray Vetiver, though you could wear it with a suit, and I have, you know, I've worn that in the office, but there's just something about that fragrance. It's like my signature, you know, um, rainy day type of fragrance. And I see myself wearing this one more this year than Tom Ford Gray Vetiver, which is why I removed that and replaced it with this here. Like I said, I love the, um, you know, Encore Noir a la Extreme. I love that smoky vetiver quality about it. I really love that it's a darker take on a, on a vetiver, but something that you could still wear. You know, the way I'm describing it, it would give you the idea that I'm thinking fall and winter, or maybe you are thinking fall and winter, but this one, make no mistake about it, it's perfect for springtime as well. Because you think about it, spring, it's still on the cooler side. Yes, when you get later in the spring, it kind of transitions into that summertime uh, summertime vibes. However, I think even in that transitional period, you could still wear this because it's 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 a dense fragrance, but it's not so thick, cloyingly dense to where it's going to be off-putting in those warmer months. It won't be. It's a great one. It's Ancre Noir a la Extreme from La Leap. Definitely, if you guys like smoky vetiver fragrances to begin with, this is an absolute must. Blind by worthy, absolutely. I don't mind telling you guys to blind buy stuff that's you know, sub $30, because I think you can pick this one up right now on discounters for like 22 to 25 bucks. If you are in to smoky type vetiver fragrances, this is a must have in your collection, a fantastic addition to uh, to my fragrance collection, one that I'll be wearing a lot this year, a la extreme 
Encre Noir a la Extreme from Lalique. All right, the next fragrance, I'm putting it here in the second spot, the ninth spot, whatever you guys want to call it. Like, again, one more time, and this will be the last time I say it, right? This is not ranked, but I want to get this fragrance out of the way, okay? That's, that's why it's here. This one launched, I believe it was back in 2008. It was uh, perfumed by Alberto Marias. Yes, it's Versace Porum. Why is this here? I need a dumb reach type of a fragrance, and I don't know if it gets more dumb reach than this. I guess some people could argue Nautica Voyage, but this has much better performance, although, you know, they're not really the same type of a fragrance. But here, you know, if you haven't heard me smoke about it before, I'm going to give you the uh, the brief overview of the fragrance, right? Summary, if you will. So this one could be worn year-round. Why? Because although it's that, you know, it's citrus dominant, that actually performs. It performs, and my skin performs very well. I get seven, eight hours easy on this fragrance. It does the performance does go beyond that, you know, to where I'm clocking it nine, ten hours later. But I want to be fair here and say that on average, you could probably some, you know, expect somewhere between six to eight hours of longevity here, which is great, right, for a citrus dominant fragrance, which in the designer world tend to fade after, you know, four or five hours, most times, not always, right? But in this one also, you have these spicy nuances running through the fragrance, but it's mainly dominated by this kind of citrus meets aquatic type of a feel that it has going for it very nice crowd pleasing like i said dumb reach type of stuff you could wear this to the gym you could wear this to the office casual dressed up date night whatever whatever you want you know if you're into you know maybe you're not like me you don't like dark you know overly sexy type of fragrances maybe you just like dumb reach crowd pleasing type fragrances to wear on date night settings this is perfect i mean it, it's like a chameleon if you will it's the chameleon in my collection and you know, I keep talking about it because it's just, I, I mean, it works in just about every situation and scenario. I mean, there's nothing wrong about wearing this fragrance anytime you really want. There's just nothing wrong with it. And in the winter, it's great because of that kind of, you know, slightly spicy characteristic that it has. You know, so it's just a great all, all year round, um, excellent, you know, freshy, like I said, dumb reach type of stuff to where you don't really have to do much thinking. You could just spray this on and, and you're ready to go and you could just know that you smell fantastic and you're probably going to get at least one compliment when wearing this if that's important to you so that is versace pour homme in somewhat of a nutshell at least for me it was a nutshell the next fragrance is another one that i just wanted to get out of the way uh early here right so we're talking about burberry touch this one is really well known for its powdery fresh spicy type of a feel in Man, this is great. I know, I talk about this one a lot too, kind of like Versace Pour Homme, you know? And this one has this mass appeal type vibe about it, but not like citrus aromatic or not blue fragrance mass appeal about it. This is one of those fragrances that you have that you spray on because you really enjoy it. And you're quite surprised at how many other people enjoy this one on you as well. Because again, it's not a blue style. It's not a citrus aromatic fragrance. So it doesn't have that mass appeal kind of quality to it that, you know, the masses would enjoy. But for some reason, this thing just pulls attention. It's so easy to wear and so easy to like. Again, you can wear this dress down. I'm talking like hoodie, t-shirt, jeans. You're going to smell great. All the way up to a suit and tie. Yes, guys, I've worn this a ton in the office because of that factor. Because I know it's going to be inoffensive. You know, this is one where it's still, although I remember this being much stronger, this was the first fragrance I wore into uh, my barbershop. So there, there's a lot of memories associated with this. I've had many bottles of this fragrance. So like I was saying, anyway, I got off track for a second, but like I was saying, I do remember this to be like a two spray and done because it was that potent. Is it that strong these days? No, but I'm saying four to five sprays, including skin, you're good. You know, one or two on the clothes and you're good. And it's going to get you that all-day performance, that anywhere from six to eight hours. And like I was saying, guys, this is something that many, many people are just going to enjoy the way that you smell. Because it's another one, it's kind of where, you know, I guess if you could say, if you could categorize it and say Versace Pour Homme is going to be your dumb reach for spring and summer, this would be your dumb reach for fall and winter. This will always be in my collection as long as it's around. It's even one of those fragrances that, God forbid, one day... It should become discontinued, which should be relatively soon because designers are just discontinuing stuff left and freaking right. This is one that I, I, I'm serious, guys. I'll buy three bottles of this stuff just so I never run out because I just enjoy it that much. And it, and it would have to be one that I would enjoy that much for it to make a list as serious like this. You know, 
10 fragrances that I'm going to keep for life. And the rest of my collection's got to go. This is staying forever. Burberry, touch. Speaking of forever, this one had to make the list. It blew me away. It was Love at First Sniff, one that I said I should have bought a 100 ml bottle. I bought a 50 ml. Of course, I'm talking about Dolce Gabbana Light Blue Forever. You know, throughout the course of the year 2021, I was kind of bashing designers in a way, saying that, that all these releases were kind of redundant. They were smelling very similar. They weren't like, not that I'm, I'm expecting them to blow my mind, but they weren't really piquing my interest. There we go. That's the right, that's what I was looking for there. This one actually blew me away, okay? And while a lot of people say that, you know, it's nothing groundbreaking, okay, that's fine. But you can't deny the fact this stuff smells fantastic. I love it. I love that photorealistic grapefruit note that you get. I'm going to spray it because I kind of want that feel right now. Yeah, see? That photorealistic grapefruit, I love that about it. I really do. You have this nice combination, this earthy, hay-like combination from that patchouli and that uh, java vetiver oil that comes in later on. When, once you experience the dry down, it gives you this feeling of being in, on the uh, on the west coast like california i'm thinking here because i'm you know if you didn't know i'm located in the state so i'm thinking of uh california the reason why i say that is because that dry down that patchouli that vetiver while the grapefruit does carry on through the life of the fragrance and it does die off you know as it gets closer to the base in that patchouli that java vetiver comes more so you know to the fore and you're smelling like this earthy this hay-like experience what it kind of mimics to me is being on the west coast and experiencing that dry beachy air and i think that has to do with the ozonic notes that are also found within the composition because that is the exact thing that i thought of when i first sprayed this fragrance you know obviously i was like wow i'm blown away by that grapefruit but then like i said that dry down mimics that dry air that you know california um places like that you know are known for great fragrance i think it's a solid release and the reason why i'm choosing to keep this one for life is because I need a great summertime uplifting fragrance, you know? So many things are, are going on in my life in the summertime, you know, with the kids and activities and all that kind of stuff. Life can get, you know, chaotic. And even if there's not those things going on still, it's nice to have something that can lift up your spirits in the, uh, in the summertime or any time of year for that matter. But there's not much that does it quite like this one. And that's why I love it. And that's why it has to be in the collection for the rest of my life. Zolce and Gabbana forever. I'm sorry, don't check about a light blue forever. Well, for those of you that have been around the channel for a long time, you guys know that I work in an office setting. I wear a suit and tie to work every single day, you know, office, professional, blah, blah, blah. So I have to have that one fragrance that just screams uber masculinity, but also, okay, this is a guy that's got his stuff together. This guy is serious. This guy means business. This guy is just... He, he's probably the CEO. You know, I need that type of a statement maker in my collection. That's why I'm choosing Man in Black from Bugatti. What a fantastic fragrance this is. Now, don't let these notes scare you. There's things in here. This is a dark fragrance. It is. But there's things in here. There's nice warm spices in here. There's this creamy, soothing, soothing, <laughs> soothing vanilla note that comes in in the dry down of this fragrance, right? You have leather here. You have these spices. It, it kind of reminds me of a toned down sort of a version of red tobacco. I know that sounds strange, right? Because this isn't a like oody type of fragrance and it's not as strong and punchy and powerful as red tobacco, but it kind of puts me in that mindset just because of all the spices that are going on here, that creaminess in the base, that touch of sweetness that you experience with red tobacco without all the harshness, you know, with a little bit more of, um, of less strain on the nose, if you will. And that's kind of what you get with Men in Black. I love the um, Men in Black. I meant Man in Black, which is kind of what you get here. And like I said, the vibe that you give out, pure masculinity. Again, you have this touch of booze in here. I believe it's a note of whiskey or rum. I could be wrong there. Who knows? There's so many different variants and types of uh, boozy notes and things like that you could put into fragrances. It's hard for me to remember sometimes. But anyway, Man in Black just gives off that, uh, that uber masculine vibe. You know, this guy's serious. He's confident. He's the CEO, he's a boss. You know, those kind of things are what's associated, at least in my mind, when I wear this fragrance, especially, you know, suited up, ready to go. So yes, it's it's a must. I must have that one fragrance, that one statement maker when I'm dressed up to the nine, ready to go to work or out to a formal event and I want that type of attention. This is definitely 10 times out of 10, the fragrance that I'm, I'm grabbing and reaching for. And another one 
if this one should ever become discontinued, I am grabbing multiple bottles because I can never be without this stuff. And that is Man in Black from Bugatti. You guys know that I love my boozy fragrances, right? We talked big boozy energy. I believe I did a boozy fragrances video last year as well. This one here comes from the House of Dior. This is the duplicate house. So this is the house that has two fragrances. I'm going to shock the world because it is not the Dior you're thinking. Not with this one, not with the other one. This one is Dior Fahrenheit. The only difference is this is the Le Parfum. So Le Parfum, you know, there's a lot of history. Like I said, if you guys have been around the channel, you know there's a lot of history between myself and the original Fahrenheit. I personally appreciate this one better. Why? There's still violet leaf. It still gives a watery feel, a watery aspect to the fragrance, you know. But that petrol vibe that it's known to give off is muted here, okay? So you don't have that off-putting petrol feel. Here, what you have is more of a sweet, more of a sweet feel contrasted with these boozy facets, right? This liqueur kind of a vibe here. It's warm. It's cozy with the spices. It's very comforting, very relaxing. Also, you want to wear this on a day night? It's very seductive and sexual too in that sense, in that setting, right? Great for the office. Why? Because it is inoffensive. This is a moderate performer with moderate sillage and the magic is in the scent trail with this one. A fantastic one. So happy to finally have this uh, in my collection. It's a difficult one to find, but when you can find this one, get it. This is going to be more for audiences that, because uh, I know this is a sought after fragrance and it is hard to get here. Okay, this is going to be one, I think for mature noses, you know, I'm thinking 30 years old plus to uh, to appreciate this one. But man, when you appreciate this one, you come to love it, you come to wear it, you smell fantastic. People around you are going to know that you smell fantastic. They're going to be complimenting you. There's also a leather note here I forgot to mention, but not about notes, just about fragrances and why I love them so much. And top 10 for life, it had to be on here. You know, if I could only keep one designer boozy fragrance, um, uh, in, in my uh, in my rotation for only 10 this has to be it because from what i have in boozy fragrances this has the most pronounced boozy note or boozy facet i should say in the fragrance and i absolutely adore this one dior fahrenheit Le parfum check it out if you haven't it's a great one coming up next you know i had to have a fougere but i wanted a legitimate fougere, right? I, I, I didn't want something that's just categorized as a fougere and has a bunch of modern crap thrown in it. No, I wanted something that screams classic, but has this modern kind of twist to it. I'm talking about Tom Ford's Beau de Jour. Now, this was this brand, Tom Ford. I'll tell you right here and now, this was a pain in the butt to select from because to start, I had this one, I had gray vetiver, and I had ombre leather. I wanted to condense that, consolidate that, if you will, to one fragrance. This was it. Why? Because I have to have a fougere. I have to have a fougere. I personally, I could wear fougeres whenever I want. T-shirt and shorts, I'll put on a fougere. And what a lot of people would argue, you should be wearing a suit or a blazer or something. And yes, into the office, I love wearing my fougeres. Again, super masculine, clean smell is what you're going to give off here. Now, this has those components that you would expect from a traditional uh, fougere to have, you know, your oak moss, your patchouli, your woods, your spices, your uh, lavender. But there is a lot, if there's vanilla in here or tonka beans, something like that, again, guys, I, I I didn't really look up notes before this video. I got up here and I shot this thing. So there's a very creamy aspect to this base. I'm thinking vanilla. I'm thinking things like tonka. Maybe even they're adding a bit of sandalwood to enhance that creamy nature about it. Fantastic, lovely fougere. Again, Great in the air, one that's going to last you six to eight hours, you know, moderate type of stuff, no big deal. But again, clean, fresh, yeah, you know what? And there is, the lavender in here comes comes off a bit, a, a touch on like the soapy side, but not overly, you know, soapy or anything like that. It's not, it doesn't remind me of things like Prada Loam or anything, you know, it's lavender, not iris that we're talking about here, but just a wonderful, pleasing smell and aroma that you're giving off. One that does scream like masculine, like a man's man type of smell. And that's that's what I love about Beau de Jour. And that's what I love about this uh, about this fragrance. And yeah, you could see, <laughs> I mean, I wore the living hell out of this stuff and for good reason. It, it's great. And I absolutely love it from the house of Tom Ford Beau de Jour. Guys, if you love Fougere fragrances and you're thinking about this one and, and you were kind of on the fence, I'm telling you, 
This is a fantastic one. Sample it if you're on the fence. Definitely sample it. Try it. You have to get your nose on this. If you are a fan of Fougeres, this one is an absolute must-have in my opinion. In my honest, humble opinion, this is a must-have for you. Like I said, if you're into classic Fougeres, you look at something with a bit of a modern touch. Beau du Jour does it. And that's why it's in this list here and one that I just can't be without. Beau du Jour. The next one up, of course, is another one that's, you know, Dumri's type of status, but... Man, I love it. And it is Bleu de Chanel from the House of Chanel. This one is the Parfum. So, you know, guys, I'm in my mid-30s, okay? I like the Parfum better. It's a little bit more mature than Eau de Toilette. It has a bit more of a performance than the Eau de Parfum. At least on my skin, it does. And I just like this um, overall scent profile the best out of the, uh, the three. Now, I hope this year, 2022, they give us e Elixir, the Elixir version of this, as I expect many designers uh, to follow the lead of Dior Sauvage Elixir. And yes, I'll be the first one in line at my local Macy's to get my hands on this. I love it. Bright citruses, right? You have that nice vetiver kind of dried on this creamy vanilla. Oh man, this stuff is beautiful. Woods, a little bit of spice, just a little touch, a little hint of spice here. Fantastic. The in my opinion, this is the best blue fragrance, in my opinion. And that's why it's here. I need one blue fragrance, and this is it. To me, this is the ultimate blue fragrance. And again, guys, this is just my opinion, but it, it doesn't get much better than this. And I know there's a crap load of blue fragrances out there. I've tried them, okay? Have I tried every single one from the designer world? No. But from the ones that I have tried, this is my favorite. My personal favorite, honestly... Niche, designer, all put together. This is one of my favorite fragrances in my entire collection. Here's why. I love the scent profile. I can dress this one up. I can dress it down, you know, so I can wear it in the office. I could dress it down, wear it casually if I want to. This is signature scent type of stuff to me. I know it's been talked about a bunch. I know many people love it. And then there's a few that hate it, you know, and can't stand it and this, that, and the next. But I'm telling you, it doesn't matter to me. And, and again, compliments if that's your thing and that's what you care about and you live and die by that pick this up then dumb reach type of stuff again casual all the way dressed up in a friggin tuxedo it, it's just great and uh, and i absolutely love this stuff and i'll never be without a bottle of it i owned a 100 ml bottle i ran through that in a couple of years and then uh, i picked this one up 50 ml bottle it's already got a um it, it's it's already has a a, a solid dent in there you can see about 10 percent of the bottle is gone already so fantastic fragrance love it blue de chanel parfum though this isn't ranked i feel like i did the top three i saved them for last you know but anyway coming in at the second spot this is the first time i'm ever featuring this fragrance on this channel the reason being is it's very hard to find very hard to find very scarce if you will this is dior this is dior homme parfum M my god because of all the hype this gets, I wanted to hate it. I smelled it and I'm like, no, this thing is just friggin' amazing. We're talking oh, that waxy, oh my God, man. This stuff is just so friggin' sexy. We're talking lipsticky makeup iris, right? Oh, it's so good. It, it's just so good. You have a nice warm spice that you could detect kind of weaving its way like that, like in and out, right? You have rose. You have a delicate touch of rose here. You have leather. You have your oud here. It's just a wonderful scent. This is sexy. Sexy as all hell. Arguably the sexiest fragrance in my collection. This stuff is fantastic. I'm so lucky and fortunate to have gotten a bottle of this. Shout out to you, Tara Olfactifiles. Appreciate you for uh, not only putting me onto this fragrance, but also hitting me up with that reminder. Guys, this is a 100 milliliter bottle this is a tester i did grab this off fragrancenet.com this one is still a great performer it still smells phenomenal um well at least you know what i'm smelling is phenomenal i just sprayed it in the air for you guys it's amazing the hype is real about this it's a beast it's killer it's great it's dior Om parfum this stuff is just it's just sexiness in a bottle is what it is Last but not least, my favorite designer release ever. At least that I've put my nose on. Again, I haven't put my nose on all 10 billion, you know, designer fragrances out there. From what I smelled, it doesn't get any better than Yves Saint Laurent's Tuxedo. Tuxedo is just a wonderful Sheepra. It's sweet. 
it's got that sweetness that sheepers kind of have you know it, it's got leather oh there is nothing that i have ever smelled that just takes me back like not takes me back in time but like just takes my freaking breath away this stuff is so gorgeous it's spicy it's patchouli you have a bit of this floral tone i'm thinking there's rose in here oh it's got a, like i said that little bit of sweet mix in there it's lightly boozy too i don't think there's any booze listed although i could be wrong but what a wonderful smell this is what a wonderful smell powerful yeah it's got great longevity but again it's not one of those fragrances that is annoying you know in its performance it's perfect this to me on the designer side of the uh of fragrances that i've tried this is the best it doesn't get any better than this i love tuxedo with all my heart this is another one if i'm in the mood to wear a tuxedo i'm wearing it i don't care if i'm in a t-shirt and shorts i don't care if i'm going to the gym or if i'm going to the court to play basketball or outside with my son or playing catch or you know i'm dressing this one up to go into the office i'm wearing it for that next formal event it doesn't matter if i'm in the mood to wear a tuxedo all rules for me go right out the freaking window i'm pulling this bad boy out because i love it that much ysl's tuxedo mic drop <laughs> all right so that's my list of 10 fragrances here and the reasons why i would choose them i hope you enjoyed i enjoyed putting this list together for you guys it was a pain in the butt, which is why I hope you enjoyed it, because as long as it took this to make this video, it took even longer to make the selections for this video. Until next time, guys, I need you to do me one more favor. So this is only the second favor. The first favor I asked you was like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Now, I need you guys to do me another favor. And this is even more important because this has to do with life. What I want from you guys is I want you to take care of one another. I want you to love each other and respect everyone. That's all I ask, other than, you know, all the other stuff that has. But seriously, guys, life is far too short and our friendship shall last forever. Let's do it, guys. Let's make life great. I know we all can. Let's strive for the best. I'll see you guys very soon. Take care, everyone. Peace.